26th of October 2024. This is Christian College Professor Solange Martinez documenting the parallelism between um, Kamala Harris' narco terrorist genocidal state and uh, her friends, Nicolas Maduro's. Let's see uh, if they have some similitudes in um, the, their modus operandi. Uh, this is uh, Eduardo Menoni. Uh, he's a political analyst and also a news reporter as well as a, a person who was born in Venezuela and lived there for uh, approximately 20 years so he knows uh, what he's talking about because besides being a news reporter a political analyst he is uh, a national of Venezuela so let's see if they have similitudes uh, the deep state mafias here in these two countries Venezuela and the United States this is uh, an assassination uh, done to a dissident and uh, as uh, here in the United States, they do to Christians and any other person who refuses to join the deep state mafia, uh, they go and kidnap the government employees, go and kidnap, uh, kidnap the dissident and then fake uh, an automobile accident. Just like my mother and I, um, with Fernando Spagnolo, the chief of police of Waterbury. He caught um, a, through the chase and he went directly to my mother's apartment at 44 Central Street, Waterbury, Connecticut, 06702, apartment 2B, to execute a hit uh, on her and myself. After we won a court case against a government employee who stole uh, more than $1 million from my mother in government benefits and one more than one million dollars from me so since my mother didn't have money to hire a lawyer i ended up representing her as she won the case and then they went to execute three hits one on november 24th 2021 uh, another one on february 15th 2023 and another one on the 18th of march 2024. it is a miracle <laughs> that we are still alive uh, a miracle a pure miracle and then they claim that Jesus Christ our Lord doesn't exist so um, as I was saying going back uh, to my point uh, after the first hit my mother's uh, car and my uh, vehicle were subjected to uh, vandalism my mother's um, Toyota Corolla 1995 appeared or showed up with uh, the brakes lines cut, a uh, hole punched into the gas tank, and we almost killed ourselves in the highway. Then uh, somebody at 3 o'clock in the morning uh, saw the police officers uh, under the supervision of Fernando Spagnolo moved all the cars, about 10 cars that were in front of my uh, Toyota Forerunner 1996, which was under my mother's name um, due to the deep state mafia wanting me to pay for somebody else's insurances and accidents. And my insurance in New York from Geico went from $109 per month, full cover, after I had it 20 years without an accident and I had a, an excellent driving uh, person discount uh, from Geico. It went from $109 uh, to 600 and something dollars because they wanted me to pay for three other uh, Deep State Mafia members car insurances and the sequestered Department of Motor Vehicles uh, here in the United States, just like in the Department of Justice, uh, put there these three deep state mafia members' uh, accidents um, under my 
under my policy and, and under my name and under my licenses or my license also so when i refused i changed my uh, Toyota for Runner 1996 on the, and I put it under my mother's name and that uh, also helped them to claim that I was a schizophrenic bipolar and de uh, delusional and that I uh, was uh, severely e uh, mentally ill so they can support their fabrication of uh, having a fake custody of me uh, and receiving $10,000 in New York for my custody and $10,000 in Connecticut. And I, I only have one body, so I, I, I can only live in one state at a time. So the deep state market, and this is through the Department of Social Services, by the way, which is a niche of uh, thieves and assassins and murderers. And... Uh, Let's go back to the point. Let's see if there are similitudes or uh, parallelism between the Deep State Mafia here and the Deep State Mafia in uh, Venezuela with Kamala's uh, communist friend, Nicolás Maduro. They found uh, this guy assassinated and the government claims it was an accident, a motor vehicles accident. Just like uh, Fernando Spagnolo, after Fernando Spagnolo tried to kill my mother and myself at our apartment, because we don't drink, we don't use drugs, we don't smoke, we don't go out, we don't party, we don't go to discos, uh, anything like that. Movie theaters or anything like that. We just pray and do our own thing. And um, before I go back to the point with the two governments, let me just finish telling you that um, a person that I recorded uh, testified, said that uh, he saw the Fernando Spagnolo and his guys moving about 10 cars before, uh, in front of my Toyota 4Runner 1996. And after they removed it, they woke up everybody in the building uh, that was in front of the street and they the police they said move your cars and after that he got a truck i think it was a garbage truck and he backed uh into my toyota for runner 1996 which was under my mother's name and uh destroyed the front part and then claimed that a person filed a false uh, accident report claiming that a person just uh went into the run it was a one-way street and he went the wrong way. Uh, miraculously, the cars, the 10 cars in front of my car disappeared by a miracle. And then he crashed into uh, my mother's Toyota uh, Forerunner 1996, which was really mine, but I had to put it under her name. And that was after the first hit uh, failed when he went to my mother's apartment we were not bothering anybody we were just praying in the apartment and he tried to kill us and uh, uh, get get rid of us um, so his friend the Department of Social Services Commissioner did not have to comply with a court order ordering him to pay back my mother like a uh, million dollars that he stole of government benefits um, from her and then he didn't have to give me back my stipends which are uh, about two thousand dollars per week and he has been stealing for about four and a half uh, years so the assassination was the perfect solution for them and so when he failed he did that to, the, to our car and then lately he put a like a, a uh, something in my car in my mother's I'm sorry my mother's uh, Honda Pilot 2005 and it exploded while while we were on the highway and after it exploded um, we uh, saw that the bumper fell off the bumper of the car um, the windshield uh, liquid tank fell off uh, and 
other parts of the car fell off when one of the tires exploded. When we uh, went to do the research about that, we were told that there was nothing wrong with the tire air. They um, arranged that a sensor in my mother's car was um, fixed. So it looked like my uh, the tire needed air and then it exploded. And then we killed ourselves in the highway due to that. And we were going to kill uh, other, other people in the highways, but these communist deep state mafia members don't care about anybody but themselves. So we were going to cause uh, like about 12 cars uh, accident or uh, about 12 people's death because uh, they wanted to not pay the money that they stole from us in government benefits, uh, but they didn't care. And then uh, they have tried to uh, assassinate us when we go to the banks. They uh, contact the bank's employees, tell them to call 911 and file false um, police reports against my elderly disabled 73 years old uh, epileptic mother and myself to fabricate that we committed a crime. And also when we go to the doctor's office, they do the same. So this is how communists, Marxists, uh, like Kamala Harris and her government um, operate. So let's see what this guy says. And this is, uh, as I said, Eduardo Menoni. He's, I'm going to be translating what he says so you have an idea. And he's going to show you, this is the picture of the guy that was dumped in a place, a desolated place, uh, after assassinated by the government. Edwin Santos. He was kidnapped, tortured, and assassinated, just like they tried to do with me 11 times. <laughs> They kidnapped me, fabricating that um, I committed a crime when they knew very well that I did not commit any crime. And then they um, applied uh, or gave, uh, forced me to swallow uh, psychotropical, uh, psychotropicals down my throat. Uh, so uh, these people are the worst. They, uh, they gave me drugs uh, for epilepsy, for um, Parkinson and uh, other very, very, very dangerous narcotics uh, to kill me, to provoke a heart attack on me. Uh, and I was having a brain hemorrhage, uh, a stroke, uh, when they uh, somebody told them or ordered them to stop the torture. This is what they do to Christian dissidents here in the United States or anybody who refuses to join the deep state mafia. So let's continue with this story from um, the United States government's friend, Nicolás Maduro, the dictator, uh, and how he go his government operates, which is very similar uh, to how uh, this government operates, this communist government under the table, of course, operates. The uh, government responded, uh, the regime responded and said that it was uh, not a, tor a tortured or an assassination, that it was uh, a traffic accident. Unbelievable. Another uh, crime against humanity that he com they commit. And they want to hide. But a lot of witnesses saw uh, this guy. Being uh, a dissident against the communist uh, government. He was also part of a command of, uh, for Maria Corina Machado, the one that is the vice president for uh, Edmundo Gonzalez, the yes. one who won the uh, election uh, and had to leave uh, Venezuela 
because anybody who wins the election against the regime uh, have to be uh, exiled, otherwise they kill them. He was kidnapped according to witnesses. The family uh, reported that he he disappeared, uh, and today they found him uh, dead after being tor tortured. Uh, just like my mother reported uh, to the very same police that kidnapped me, uh, uh, that uh, she didn't know where I was, that she wanted to know where I, uh, they had me, and they um, told her many times that they didn't know where I was, the police. The one that took me from, the one that went to her apartment and kidnapped me, uh, accusing me of kidnapping her and also of um, being a danger to myself and to others and filing false emergency certificates, which is a crime in the United States, serious crime, and fabricating other things that were ridiculous, that were obviously untrue. So um, he disappeared, the police didn't know where he was, and then he showed up dead. Uh, witnesses attest that he was kidnapped uh, by government employees and then he showed up dead. Unbelievable, he says, unbelievable. In the state of Apure, he was found. The desperate family members uh, prayed uh, to and asked to to find find him alive, even if he was tortured, very very much tortured. But it was not like that; they killed him. Human rights uh, declared that uh, it was a very possible assassination and uh, they demanded uh, an investigation which is not going to happen because the when the government assassinates somebody they themselves are not going to inv investigate themselves and find somebody uh, and find the guilty parties in a dictatorship uh, declared dictatorship like Venezuela or a dictatorship here uh, under the table They add to more um, crimes against humanity here uh, uh, in Venezuela, he says, and just like here in, in the United States. The ONU, uh, United Nations uh, Committee, is uh, investigating it, supposedly. <laughs> And Maduro was supposed to have uh, an international court's uh, arrest warrant, but he's, he doesn't. What could have happened? Two things. One, uh, number one, they were torturing him and they went too far and he died. And then they threw the body in there to make to make believe that it was a, an accident, just like Fernando Spagnolo's uh, modus operandi in his deep state mafia here in Waterbury, Connecticut. Uh, and uh, there are other cases, uh, and I'm, again, I'm surprised I'm still alive. There are other cases where people showed up dead, uh, and they were business owners, and business owners have to pay him a protection um, amount of money every month, every two weeks. So if she, uh, that business owner refused, uh, 
uh, that was the reason why she showed up dead uh, in her bar. And the second choice is that they kidnapped me, kidnapped uh, him, and then ex extrajudicially executed him. And then after a few days, they threw the body there, just like Fernando Spagnolo's modus operandi, the chief of police of Waterbury, Connecticut, one of Kamala Harris' uh, corrupt uh, government employees. I mean, a government employees and chief of police. He had reported, just like myself, uh, corruption within the government and the collapse of a bridge before this happened to him. They said uh, that there, uh, there, there could be uh, associations with uh, terrorists here. And we all know that Nicolas Maduro uh, has, uh, is associated with the terrorist state of Iran, the communist state, state of Iran. Uh, uh, the, his wife uh, uh, admitted that, he, that that body was of her husband's, that was her, her husband's body, and <clears throat> doctors uh, found five uh, gunshots in his body. So I don't know how somebody can be driving and have a, an accident after uh, being shot five times. And coincidentally, after the, the government employees took him. What a coincidence. found uh, tortured signs there along with the five gunshots and then uh, they found him. So this is exactly how the United States government's uh, communist government under the table, the narco-terrorist state, genocidal state of the United States. That's how they work. So you see there is a parallelism between these government and Nicolás Maduro's Gorman. <clears throat> and if this continues, if Trump doesn't win, it's going to get worse. He said, uh, this is how the mafias operate. They kidnap the person, torture, uh, and, and, and or execute him extrajudicially, or her, in my case, they tried. Uh, and then say that it was a... Uh, uh, an accident, a uh, traffic accident. They have some nerves, definitely.